Hello guys, Durant slash Learn Twain here and welcome to part 2 of our Dynet tutorial series where we will be making a remote controlled turtle or at least the beginnings of it. So now that we've installed Dynet on our computers here, let's uh, make this a little more interesting. So currently it says hello world, so that's pretty boring. So we want to improve on this. So basically, you can keep this website running for the basic stuff. The more advanced stuff, you need to stop it. And by the way, if you want to know how to stop it, you hold Control and T, and that will terminate it. And if you want to restart it, you hold Control R. Control T, type in ID, and this is computer number two. Now, this is, you can actually use the built-in edit thing, the built-in editor. Uh, yeah, so edit site slash home example, and here you can edit the website and stuff. But that's a very bad editor, it's a very annoying little editor to use. So I prefer Notepad or Notepad. So, yeah, ID. So, if you want to use Notepad or Notepad, type in ID, go to your saves directory, then you know, Minecraft saves demonstration. Computer, your world name goes over here, and your directory, your save directory goes over there. This is computer number two, so clicking two. Then open the site folder inside here. Don't worry about this dynamic thing. We're gonna edit home. So if you don't have Notepad, don't worry about it. It's fine. So uh, we're gonna reboot you so we can actually see our changes live. But that's a cool thing about Dynet. So yeah. This is a pretty boring website right now. So let's edit this to uh, Welcome to my turtle. I'm going to save that. And let's add something else. What, do you, what should we add? Um, I made this website myself. Yay! Uh, you know, just write anything you don't want there. You click refresh. Welcome to my turtle. I made this website myself. Yay! So you can see that this is exactly the same thing. Because, you know, it's loading from this. So that's pretty... It's a little more interesting than Hello World. But uh, it still doesn't do anything. And it's black and white, which is very boring. So let's let's add some colors. Let's add some colors. Um, so there's a bunch of color commands, oh, sorry, that you can use. So you can change the foreground and the background. So what color should we make this? Let's make it um, pink, maybe. So we reduce to the power of F6 for pink. So that basically, this thing to the power of F or, yeah, that means change the color of the foreground to color 6. Now there's a bunch of colors, I'll uh, just recite them here quickly, I have a list of them on my other screen. White is 0, orange is 1, magneta is 2, light blue is 3, yellow is 4, lime is 5, pink is 6, gray is 7, light gray is 8, kine is night, purple is A, blue is B, brown is C, green is D, red is E, and black is F. Now I know that's a to F aren't numbers, but they are in hexadecimal, so deal with it. So yeah, for A to F, they need to be capital letters, so keep that in mind. So if we save this to the power of F6, and we refresh this, you'll see that this is now in pink. Isn't that much cooler? So we can also change the background color of things to make it also more interesting. That's to the power of B, and then your color. So we're going to make it orange, which is color 1. Don't worry about remembering these numbers, by the way. There's a table of this in the description, and it's also included in the manual, which is included in the download. So if we refresh this, we get it's already looking much more interesting. So yeah, and you can, you know, make it so that every second letter is, or every letter is a different color. 
the power of F uh, light blue three. I'm just using some random colors here, so you can make it look all interesting and stuff, and uh, you know you can do some ASCII art in here. I don't know a lot of ASCII art. I don't know smiley face. It's ASCII art. There, I get a smiley face. I don't know something I don't know. box. Let's do a box. There we go. I've got a nice little box. You can color it in with the color functions or do whatever. I don't care. <laughs> so yeah, that's your basic web page color syntax. Now uh, let's let's do something more advanced. Let's uh, let's add a website, a web page. So we basically go to here, and we want to make a new page. We're gonna call this. Uh, remove that .txt part. We're gonna call it uh, about the about page. Yes. So yeah, let me edit that in Notepad plus plus, and we're basically gonna move this thing into here. So okay, oopsie, didn't mean to click that. So now we've created a page called about. Don't worry about this dynamic thing. Don't delete it though. So we got home and about our two web pages. So now we can go my turtle one slash about, and you can access that page. You go my turtle one slash home. You don't need to write the slash home bit. If you remove it, it'll automatically go to slash home. So yeah, but typing that's a bit tedious, don't you agree? It's a uh, not how you browse websites these days. So what you basically usually have is hyperlinks uh, about this web oh, website. So for example, like that, and you'd be able to click on it and go to the page. Right now, though, it does nothing when I click on it. But we can change that. But to make something clickable, what you do is you add the squiggly character. Now to add the squiggly character, it's shift and the key under your escape key. If you have a well, the same kind of keyboard I have, the QWERTY. If you have like an SRT or whatever other types of keyboards there are, then maybe it'll be somewhere else, I don't know. Just the squiggly character, and then lock, colon, and then about, which is the page name. So if you refresh this, you won't see any change, but if you click on it, we'll now go to the about page. I can do the same thing here. Return to home page and go squiggly line lock home. Refresh this, and there we go. Now, of course, you can still have those fancy colors on this. I'm going to move that to here so now it looks like a link. And uh, yeah, there you go, you got yourself a basic website. Now you can make as many pages as you want, as many links as you want. If you want to link to other websites, you can basically go glob for global and then your website name here, blah slash home. But we can also do, um, let's see, what's this website called again? My turtle one slash home. It's just basically the same thing. So I'm just using it to demonstrate something. You can go place this to blah slash home, you'll see that we'll be redirected to the website blah slash home, which doesn't exist, of course, because we haven't made a website called blah slash home. You can make another web server, you know, again, plonk down this, plonk down that, put the disk in there, you know how it works by now. So yeah, that's how you make your basic websites. Um, you can make some cool stuff with that. I'm guessing you can make like a little Wikipedia about all the blocks in Minecraft if you're really bored. Or you can make a website about yourself, or about your pet dog, or your slime that you once saw in that cave that one time, or that experience you had with that creeper, that terrible one you ever want to recall. You can start a little blog, you know, a faller instead of Tumblr. 
call it something clever. Um, but that's it. That's up for you to make. Uh, that's part one or part two of my Dynet tutorial series. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it, and you make some cool websites with this. Thanks for watching.